What's going on? What's going on? What is going on, man? Shout out to the CIA. One love to the FBI. We are back. We are back. We are back. One more again uh, on in Instagram. 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 We are back. We want to. Let's see what's going on on TV. Should we have something playing in the background? I usually like to have something playing back there. Let's see. No. No, we'll turn it off. Anywho. Question of the day. I asked a, a couple of questions yesterday, and it was along the lines of, gentlemen, many men think or believe that modern, that uh, many men think modern women just don't know or understand men today. A lot of guys have sent their messages about this. What do you think most women misunderstand or simply get wrong regarding men's sexual needs and desires. What impact do you think these misfires have on modern women's relationships? And how does associating men's true nature or men's nature and desire with being toxic or the like affect boys and men of all ages? And on uh, Instagram, I just shortened all this down to what do they keep getting wrong? Because that's what I think I've noticed more and more. I asked, the, I asked the same question on Instagram. What do they get wrong? What do they get wrong? So on today's show, we're going to talk about what are women getting wrong? Of course, I see things that says nothing, accountability, thinking masculinity is okay their standard, lack of accountability, everything, their mindset. Okay, guys, when I say what are women getting wrong, I'm going to need people, I'm going to need you to be more specific. See, if we're going to, if you're going to talk, see, during men's week, a lot of men want to be heard. You want to be heard. All right, you want to be heard, but you need to have something to say. You got to have something specific to say. So if you want women if you want women to really start making adjustments or changes, you need to be specific. So what specifically are, are women getting wrong? What, what are they getting wrong? So when I bring guys on, I only want to bring on guys that have something that women are getting wrong specifically. Not some general vague notion. Do me a favor. Appreciate that you like the show, but don't come on and, you know, I want to give a shout out to Nug Nug and Tim Tim. Let me tell you a story about when I was three years old. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. I want to say that modern women don't understand or know who men are today because when it comes down to sex, they think that we're, they think the men think about sex like they do. Ladies, the average man thinks about sex once every seven seconds, and it's not something we can just choose to turn on and turn off. A man's sexual needs and sexual desires is hardwired into us. It's not a switch. And see, there used to be a time where women understood men's sexual needs and desires, so you women wouldn't try to play games with things like that. How many times do you hear women talk about stringing them along, girl, making weights up and so forth? Or you get a man to the point to where he's ready to go, and it's like, well, hold up, wait, let me think. Hold on, ladies. Of course, it's your body, your choice, but you need to understand what you're dealing with when you get to man. You better keep coming in and asking me. Let me do this. Uh, let me do this right here. I wish you had moderators in here. I wish you had moderators in here. I really wish we had moderators. Modern women, how are you going to understand the very man you say you want to marry, you want to be, have children, if you don't understand men's nature, how you gonna how you going to actually... Um, cohabitate, live with it. And guys, here's where it comes down to you guys. You guys got to understand, you need to be able to tell women what you want. Guys, you need to be able to tell women clearly 
what it is they're getting wrong. See, in, in any relationship, it's based on communication. If you got a lady friend and she wants to please you or she wants to understand what to do, you can't just leave it up to open to interpretation. What are they getting wrong? What do they misunderstand? So this is the time I'm going to open it up to guys. Here's the thing. You got to be on camera. You have to have the light in front of you, not behind you. If I pop and if I pop on camera and you're not on camera, I'm going to just boot it. I'm going right to the next person. Keep it cool, keep it classy because um I don't get on here cussing and being overly sexual. Um, and I'm going to handle the first couple of calls, see how it goes. I'm looking for men. And here's the thing. Um, for sake of this conversation, I want to keep it to men 25 and older. It's not as though I don't want to hear from men 24 and under. But due respect to you young men, um, you're still in a phase Many of you are still in the phase of knowledge acquisition. And I don't want you to get the raw side of the deal because realistically, many women are going to say, what does this young man really know about this long term? It's a matter of experience, maturity. 25 and older. 25 and older. Uh, and let's get it. But I want to hear from me and my own age. Do we start your own podcast? Do you want to hear from me and your own age or do you want to learn something? How about that? Because under 25, most guys are dating just to hook up, to hang out. They're not dating for a re long-term relationship. Oh, let me do this too. Let me turn this off. Turn off commenting. Questions are on. Request a live. You can't make people moderators on, on uh, Instagram. That's a problem. All right. So questions are silly at this point. Let me do this. Boo. That's that. We'll shut that down. So the only thing that's on is request to go live. Hello? Hello. Hello, how you doing, Mr. Samuels? Hi, right, well, how old are you? I'm 28. 28. What's your first name? Uh, Oki. It was short for Oki Chuku. Okay, well, what, what, do, what do women, what are women getting wrong? Um, women are, first of all, I just want to say uh, I love your show. I've um, been watching you since January, and um, you're doing God's work out here. Um, Appreciate it. Um, what women are doing wrong is I feel like a lot of women are impatient. So basically, women want a man to have it now. Everything women don't want to like wait or build with a man. They kind of just want the man to do all the hard work on his own, and then they kind of just want the benefits, you know. So I feel like if women can just kind of just be patient and like learn to build with a man, what does be patient mean? Being patient is basically, I think women should value men off of potential. So, like, let's say... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I want to be clear. The women should value a man off of potential. How do you evaluate potential? 
like visual potential. So basically, let's say if a woman's dating uh, the, the, a five-star recruit uh, high school basketball player, but he's not in the NBA yet. Yeah, well, I don't care about all that. I talk about regular men. I'm okay, talking about well, now. let's say she's dating um, the valedictorian for the high school and he got a, a scholarship to Harvard, but he's not making money yet. Like, that's what I mean, like date on potential. So, and a lot of women, if you were a father, you you condone turning your daughter over to a man strictly on potential. If it's valid potential, then yes. No, potential is potential. You don't know if it's valid until it becomes outcome. Your baby girl that you raised, you protected, you kept chased, you kept off the, the stripper pole. You turn her over to a man based strictly on his potential. Yes, if, if it's valid potential, then yes. Again, so give us valid potential. Um, for see, what see, see, see what I mean is guys are often, we often say women need to be more patient. I agree. But when you say that they need to evaluate men off of potential, I'm listening. But you got to give some assurances. Potential offers no assurances. How do you make, you say valid potential. Well, how do you validate something that comes with no assurances? That's what I'm saying. Like, a high value man has to start out from somewhere. So women have to be able to see that before he becomes high value. And I feel a lot of, well, if a lot of women did that, a lot of women can get these guys that they actually want instead of trying to get them when they're already high value and their standards are really high. Um, I'll give you an example. With me, I'm 28. I'm in my last year of medical school. I'll be a physician, uh, anesthesiologist next year. So a lot of women actually are valuing me because they see that, okay, he's in his last year of medical school. He's, he has good board school. He's, he's smart. So I can see that he's going to be a, a high-value man. So no, a well, high-earning man. I, I, well, I, I make a distinction between high-value and high-earning. Those aren't the same. Okay. Go ahead. True. Go ahead. So um, the high-value part can come. I understand. Yeah, you're – the, the six. There are, lot, there are a lot of guys who make money who are not very valuable. But you're still saying that women should evaluate on the man of potential. Okay, but you got to give some parameters. All potential. Cause, okay. Um, are you from, if you're familiar with the oil industry, a little where, bit. Okay, well, oil is found in certain places throughout the country. Just because you go drill for oil in Texas because there's oil adjacent to the land doesn't mean you're going to hit, but you still got to invest money. You got to be able to define potential. Okay, a guy who's going to medical school, going to become an anesthesiologist. All right, but that's a very small subset of men. It is. So what about a woman that basically... I'm not, dis I'm not disagreeing with being more patient and evaluating on potential, but the problem I have with potential is women could easily flip it up and say, I'm 300 pounds, but I'm working out now. You should marry me on the potential that I'm going to lose weight. That is true, but it has to be bad at potential. So I have to see her in the gym. I have to see her in strict diet. I have to see, I'm not saying that I would, Date a woman like that, but I'm saying. Are so most honest? Okay, so if a man becomes a doctor, all right, that means he makes a, he makes he makes good money. What about the man he is though? All, I mean, see, there's more to potential than just money. And see, what I'm trying to get you to understand is not trying to make every guy be you. You got to understand the market. How are you selling your potential? Because here's the problem I have with a lot of guys today. A lot of guys today think just because I make money, I should have all the options. Because I'm, I'm more educated, because I have these degrees, I should have all the options. That ain't how it works. You still got to sell yourself. I run into more upset, angry, frustrated guys who are STEM guys because they may be accomplished in their career fields, but they lack EQ, social skills, the ability to actually 
interact and get along in the social setting. But then they lament women, they, but they want women to pick up them on their potential. That's true. But so, that, you know so that just true. like women need to, so if you want women to be patient, fair, but I want you to ask about if this is your daughter, you, a man's potential, if he's a young man, yeah. So here's the thing. You're, you're, you're 60 years old, 55, 60 years old. Your daughter is coming to you as a graduate from college, and she's with a and she finds a guy who is two years older than her, and he is planning on going to medical school to become a surgeon. Okay, but he still has many more years of schooling left. Then there's a forty-year-old man who's already established in his career already the quote unquote high earning man has has the resume. Which one are you gonna suggest your daughter go to? The guy that's two years older or the guy that's seventeen years older? Uh, that's that's a very difficult question. Why? Because it it varies. It varies on her purposes as well. Um No, it's about potential. Who has the greater potential? Not sure. Um, one guy well, has our, one guy has potential. One guy has outcomes. Mm -hmm. But see, you're stuck on an age. But see, women have to make choices based upon men who can actually deliver on more than just potential. Because you would not want your daughter to be with somebody who was not secure, rich or not. He needs to be at least be secure. Mm -hmm. So. When you waver on that 17-year argument, why? What's the problem with age gap dating? Well, well, that just kind of gives you like a bimodal uh, distribution. So all the g young guys are going to be lacking quality women, and all the older guys are going to be having all the quality women. So that's so how the world, that's how the world, well, like it or not, that's how it is anyway. Okay, and outside of our country, it, Age gap dating is far more the norm. They think we're, we're weird here for having young men who are all potential dating women who are at the height of their, at the height of their, uh, uh, their ability. If you've listened to any women to call in from South America, Brazil, Argentina, um, the, the norm is dating men who are older. See, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make your potential and a young woman's potential be the same thing. And your potential is higher later. Hers is now. She needs to sell to the highest bidder now. But I don't think it has to be black and white. Like it could be like a gray area, like, you know, based on how far the person is, you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, there's a difference between, oh, your first year of medical school and your last year of medical school, you're about to graduate. You know, if it's if he just started, then maybe, yeah, you know, maybe choose the older guy that's already established. But if he's but the problem, last see, year... No, and, so the ultimate problem is what life comes down to being very black and white. You can only pick one person. So I'm asking you about potential, and you're telling women to make a choice off potential, but you see how you're having a difficult time value, uh, defining that? Basically, you're saying they should marry men like me. They should have valid potential, though. Valid potential. Like but, yeah, but, okay, valid potential means what? Valid to whom? Just because you graduate medical school no, does no, not... The majority. Okay, just because you could graduate medical school, right? Does that guarantee you you're going to become an anesthesiologist and become financially stable? You still got to pass medical boards and stuff, right? Yes, you do, but... So, if you're a woman... One man is already established. You see, this is, why I, this is why I need you guys to understand the choices we're asking women to make. One guy is established and has the outcome. Another guy has potential. Man, come on, be reasonable. You know that it would be a smarter thing to take the guy who already has the outcome. Yeah. And, okay. and here's the problem. The guys with the potential need to do a better job marketing the potential because the world isn't. Who's but, okay? Okay. What? But, but, but which one does she have the highest success rate in getting? 
The guy who already is established. That's why older men with the resources trump younger men with potential every day. But he's going to have more. Uh, I like it. Okay, stop right there and breathe. You can't just go past that. True, true. Because one is one. My potential is here. Yeah. And I got $10 million in the bank and I got this, I got that, I got this, I got that. Again, I'm not, dis I'm not disputing potential. It just has to be who's evaluating potential. And that's the problem. Because oftentimes when guys are talking about potential, they're talking about themselves and it becomes a sales question. How are you selling your potential? I'm, I am a good investment long term. By me, I'm, I am Google in 2005. Get me before I go up. I am Microsoft before we go public. Granted, but for every Microsoft, there's a micro turf. Whose job is it to market that potential? It's the public, the or your peers. No, it's it's no, it's the person who wants the it's the person who wants their potential being evaluated. You go to the bank. You go to angel investors, the amount of money that they're going to give you, loan you, whatever, is directly tied to the potential and how good you make the deal seem. But there still has to be a mix of both. See, it's not either or, it's and. Potential is fine. You keep saying valid potential, but who's doing the validating? Her. Her. She would be. And that's the problem. Because that's, that's the problem. She's doing the validating. And I agree. I think young women, younger women should look at guys who have potential, but this is why the whole high value thing is so important. I, one more, one more. The, the whole thing about not being high value, because if men recognize your potential and if, see, right now we have individuals choosing individuals. No one's signing off on anybody. It used to be that if you came to my, my house to see my daughter, I had to meet you. My wife would have to meet you. I'd have to know your people. I'm going to run your background. Then I will have a much better understanding of who you are versus on just your resume. That's valid potential. But right now we don't have that. And, but, this, but the fact of the matter is, what do, we, what do we use to give women to validate their potential since that's removed? Because that's the way it's been for the longest. Because we as men, you got to understand, we as men, we don't, we don't have the same clock they do, right? They got between uh, yeah. the first time of their cycle and a few years and 35 before a lot of things happen. So yeah. I agree, potential. But just as I agree, potential, you got to market that potential. You can't just say, I'm in medical school. It has to be something else, active marketing. Okay. Okay. Because I, it, go ahead. Um, so I was going to give you a scenario. So let's say there is a 40-year-old well-established physician and you have a daughter and you know him, but let's say I'm dating your daughter and where I am right now, I'll be a physician in eight months. So, but she really likes me. So you, would you say, hey, don't date this guy, date this 40-year-old guy, I know he's already established? Or would you kind of be like, hey, Work with this guy. This guy has. That's not the scenario I gave you. I said she was seeing them both. Okay, if she's seen them both, let's put it that way. She's Take seen the them both. Years. I tell her to go with the forty-year-old guy, and you would too if you were okay. a father. Okay, but so what? No, what no, 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 no. And you would too if you were a father, because potential is great. But are you a sports fan? Yes, sir. What's your favorite sport? Basketball. Basketball? Yes, sir. Sam Bowie, Sam Bowie had a lot of potential. He was drafted high. He was drafted above Michael Jordan, right? I think I remember that, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lim you, don't, you, you don't even remember who Sam Bowie is, but you do know who Michael Jordan is. He didn't watch him play. Mm -hmm. Potential is wasted every day. I went to the University of Oklahoma, and I saw lots of guys who run fast and lots of potential wasted every day. And if you had a daughter, or you or I don't want to say if you're a female, but if you were a father and your daughter, you go, the smart bet will go with the guy. You can verify what he's done. Yeah. But where does that put the young I, I, guys that comp are... Competing? 
I don't care about that. Compete, compete, young man. Wait your turn. How about that? Wait. Wait. Okay. Starve. Eat scraps. Wait your turn, youngster. Or knuckle up and fight. That's what it is. That's the truth. I don't care about you trying to compete. If we're, that's the world, right? Well, what about the young guys? You ain't my son. I get it. I get it. I, I, I get that. Like, I understand. Like, but I if it was your daughter, what would you say? Go to the young guy because he's the young guy? Would you say, no, I want my daughter to have the best outcome? What would you tell your daughter? I want her to have the best outcome, yeah. So what would you tell her? The 40-year-old guy who's established who's already produced or the guy who's potential? I mean, yeah, the 40-year-old guy. Yep. So now stop yeah. acting like you wouldn't do the same thing if it wasn't you. That's the problem. See, that's the problem. You're young, and you're like, that ain't fair. I don't care about if it's fair. Knuckle up. Make yourself a better candidate. Show that your potential is better than the outcome. Or if not, buy some lotion. <laughs> nah, don't need that. But that's my point. See, how many, what, what's, what's, what state do you live in? Well, right now I'm in uh, Florida, Miami. Okay. Miami. Go to Brickell. And I guarantee you, you'll see a lot of older men with beautiful young women stepping out of cars. Mm -hmm. Then you'll see a lot of guys down there who have a lot of potential hanging out with each other. Why? Because the women are, because the potential is just that, potential. Now, the question is, if I were a young guy today and I had potential, I wouldn't be worrying about dating right now because I know right now I could get a good deal. I wouldn't be worried about a woman until I was at least about 35. So I'm 28 right now. So you you telling me that I shouldn't be I'm worried? I'm saying I, me, I wouldn't be worried about a woman. When, when I was younger, I really didn't want to get have my first child until 35 because it's because... What I'm dealing with, what, what y'all are dealing with, we had that without the internet. So y'all didn't get the knowledge we got. That's true. So I saw my friends get together younger together. And, you know, for the, for the ones that it worked out, um, many it didn't because women were evaluating potential and they evaluated it erroneously. They evaluated potential uh, on sports and entertainment, things like that, versus the account of this or that. Um, so I understand the dilemma. Me, I saw the marketplace was unbalanced, and I didn't, and I didn't have a problem with women. Never have really had a problem with women, but you still have issues with them. But if you know you're going to get a better deal once you're established, why not be 35 and have a 23 year old wife? Versus be 28 and try to have a wife who's roughly your age. You can provide, but what can you teach her? That's She's your peer. True. That's true. Provider, profit, protector. There needs to be a gap. We used to be all right with age gap dating. The reason we don't like age gap dating so much is because, well, this is too long of a too long of something to go into, but that. Are you familiar with the, uh, you ever see the movie Malcolm X? No, no, sir. Uh, shame on you. <laughs> I know, I know Malcolm X, but. <laughs> shame on you. Uh, the Nation of Islam, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, shout out to the Nation of Islam. He said the proper age for a woman for a man is what? Half the man's age plus seven. Iconic line. So if you're a 40-year-old man, what's the proper age? Half the man's age, 40. Mm -hmm. That means 20 mm -hmm. plus 7. So 27. 27. So if the man is 60, half the man's age 37. plus 7. If the man's 28, half the man's age yes. plus 7. Mm -hmm. It's a much more agreeable. And if you're 28 and going into medical school and the daughter's 21, if she had a dad, she'd be like, okay, I see he's going to go be an anesthesiologist. Let me see who his people are. Let me talk to his mother, his father. Let me run a background check on this guy. I'd have to sit down and evaluate you. You'd have to convince me why I should say, yeah, you're good for my daughter. You'd have to sell me. And selling me ain't going to be like selling her. Right? That's but true. then... 
25, 30 years later, you going to be Dr. So-and-so and that young knucker going to come through the door saying, hey, I'm going to law school and something. So forth. you're like, uh-huh. Let me let me see let me see who your background is. Let me talk to your people now. Now talk to me about who you're gonna be for mine. And then conversely, you tell your boys what. If your boys were going to college, or if your boys were going to trade school or the military, you tell them the dating market ain't fair. Depending on where you go, is going to have a great impact upon the caliber, quantity, and opportunity of women you can have. You may have to use delayed gratification. If you're going here, you may have to wait until your late 30s, mid to late 30s. But if you're going into the military or blue collar where you tend to have a quicker start or whatever, you would have to tell your sons the marketplace because it's not fair. We get in this world what we are. So if you're going to become an anesthesiologist, how are you going to market yourself? Other than I'll be Dr. So-and-so, I'll be making a lot of money. That's good. But you got to think about the fathers you would you would need to sit in front of and the men of the village you would have to convince that you would be good potential. But every high value man has to start out somewhere. That's what I'm saying. So, so well, also, be okay, if you follow me, I said you can't be high value under 30. Yeah, you, you do say that. I agree. Uh-huh. And how many years do you need to be earning your that amount of money before you can even scratch the surface high value? So four years from now. Right. I'll be making four hundred thousand dollars. But then you'll be you'll be close to thirty five. Yeah. So you gotta stop. But you're not there yet. See, but I'm just saying, like just like no, listen, just like you want women to have patience, you guys need to have patience too. It's not your turn yet. You gotta have patience, but you want it now. Okay, I I can see, I can see your point. Um, I do have one other concern. Um, okay, we gotta hear it, man. I spent quite yeah, a while here. Um, okay, um, so on Monday, you were speaking to an individual, and he was an average man, and he had a girlfriend that was a dog degree doctorate, and you said they were unequally yoked, and I was, you know, I follow your channel, I, I you know, I study you, and you you basically said they were unequally yoked, but you didn't know how she looked or you didn't know her fit level. So you were kind of valuing her based off her. <laughs> Did he education. say they were equally yoked? You, you said they were unequally yoked. I said it. And did he agree? He, did he agree? I'm not, I don't remember if he agreed or not. He's but a musician he, and an Uber driver. And she was going for a double doctorate. They're unequally yeah. yoked. He but, even admitted they were, look, they're unequal. What's the issue? Sometimes a man is not, okay. But I'm saying, there. you were saying it based off her educational, like you weren't basing it off of her fitness or her, her looks or her submittity or, or her femininity or any of that stuff. Like what the, See, what, what I have is knowledge you don't have. That's what you saw. I do this in real life. And what I can read, you can't. No, no issue. I was just no, my, my point is, yes, off of her double doctorate, but it's a totality of things I'm reading. See, one thing that happens a lot is you guys hear stuff and you assume that you understand what's going on in this mind. You haven't lived and sat in this chair. If you've ever sat down with somebody who's an expert in the game where they can read moves before it's happening, they have a different level, an expert level versus a novice level. So he said they were unequally yoked. As well, any questions I ask is for a reason. And I want you to be honest. If you had a daughter that was going to get, just based off of what you just said, if you had a daughter that was going to get a double doctorate in biochemistry and chemistry or mathematics, something, or both science related, right? And he and her boyfriend was an Uber driver and a, and a musician. Would you say they were equally yoked? But I'm saying it, it has to be based I, off not, her uh, uh, not <laughs> What was the question? Uh, okay. In a, in a perfect world, yes. But okay, no, 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 not, not a perfect world. So you say, I said, if you were a father of a daughter going to get a double doctorate, in math and biochemistry and mathematics, whatever, and her boyfriend 
was Uber driver and uh, musician, would they be equally yoked? And you would tell her, well, yeah, daughter, based upon your looks, this is what you can get. But he was an average earner, Mr. Samuels. That's what I'm saying. Like, he, he was an average guy, which is- He was an is average it. earner. But they were on two different socioeconomic class. That has something to do with your... If you guys honestly believe that just because a woman... First of all, I didn't know how she looked. Number one. Number two, it doesn't matter. They're in two different socioeconomic classes. They run, they're in two social, different social groups. And this is something black people are going to have to get understand real quick. But there that's is a problem. A, no, it is not a problem. The only problem is we're the only group that acts like everybody should be the same. Let me tell you one of the problems we have in the black community. But that's why the woman said she's a PhD. Oh, can you listen? Because she thinks she can, she need, like, you that's know, why. I'm... No, you need to listen. At 28 years old, this is something I'm going to teach. You need to listen. White people draw lines between their, sec between their groups. Asian people, Hispanic people, and Middle Eastern folks all do. Black folks, we say we're all the same. We are not. Black men, you can have the president of the United States, well, not the president. You can have the governor and the, the local D-boy all getting their hair cut at the same barbershop, right? Yes. You can have the, you can have the, you can have the, uh, uh, an entrepreneur or Tyler Perry, and the local, uh, the local college kid getting a haircut at the same place, right? Do you think that's how it works in other, in other groups? No, it doesn't. No. So in our place, we have a social crunch to where we all say, I'm a man, he a man. So we eliminate social class. And we act as though social lines don't agree, don't, don't, don't line up. We get mad when we talk about the top 10% or the bourgeoisie or the boule or blah, 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 blah. We act like we're all the same, but that is not the world. The world has social stratification, assortative mating. If it all didn't matter, why do you need to go to become an anesthesiologist? Because we're judged off our education and social economic status men we don't judge women on that like that's this is what like you say <laughs> that's what I'm uh if you think high value men just pick women just because they're beautiful and brainless you haven't been paying attention no but i'm saying you didn't see how she looked you just you just noticed you just saw that she had a dog degree and that's what i'm saying like that's i'm saying that's what you saw Again, you're still tr trying to act like you say, you don't understand what I evaluate on. So why don't you ask the question instead of telling me what I saw? How can you say the unequally yoked if you have not seen the other values of the woman besides her education, like her femininity? Is she inspiring? Is she submissive? The way she looks, is she fit? How can you say she's only equally yoked to an average man? If because that man, because him. that man himself in that call had put her up on a pedestal above him. He did. He did. You just un okay. We spent ten minutes, and you said you saw that. That makes but, them no breathe. That makes them unequally yoked. True or false? True, but maybe he doesn't no, know. No, 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 no. There's no but. There's no. Right. Now you're doing what women do. <laughs> I just, 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 just admit that you don't. Un you may not understand why I said what I said, but even in your own argument, he put her on a pedestal. That's right. unequally yoked. You assumed it was strictly based upon education alone. You were incorrect. Okay. I, I respect that. I and we got to start. And the fact of the matter is we have a huge problem in our community. What, what, what school do you go to? Huh? What college you, what, what was your undergrad? Uh, University of Houston. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between having a University of Houston Cougar degree than having a, a Yale or University of Texas degree. Those are different. That's true. One, one is worth more 
on the marketplace. And like it or not, women, while they may, need to be fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive, feminine, beautiful, inspirational, high value men don't date empty headed models. Once you, and once you get out here, and once you get out here out of the theoretical world, once you get out here and start moving amongst men and start seeing the kind and caliber of woman they pick, you want it all. And what you don't have is a man who is pedestalizing a woman and saying that she's beneath him because he's an average guy and she just has her degree. You're misinterpreting things. So a woman that has a, 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 a doctor, a PhD, but she's, let's say she's not the best looking and she's not Dif submissive. Different situation. But how's, how's that's a different situation, a different, you're trying to take a conversation. Okay. I'm about to end this because now we're going to get into the insane. You're trying to take a situation I talked about on Monday that you misinterpreted because from, from the get go, if you understood who he was talking about, he pedestalized her. He said she was out of his league. That's the unequally yoked. Don't try to make that anything other than what it is. So to talk about, well, what if a woman has this, this, and that? I don't know what else is going along with that. It's and to me, that's still trying to take this, make a square peg fit in a round hole to make your argument, your point of view, make sense. It's okay to be incorrect and just leave it alone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Samuels. I love your show. I love your content and um, your huge inspiration. Appreciate it. <clears throat> yeah, see, I can't be responsible for <laughs> some of these disagreements. Look, there's a difference between a, a professional's behind the wheel of a race car versus an average driver versus a rookie. What I see may not be what you see. And I don't know. It's like, stop trying to make everything fit into, I don't know. It's like, it's like some, I think some of y'all are just digging for, for ways to split hairs. So I'm asking, what are they getting wrong? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. What are they getting wrong? I mean, we need to get doing? these badges up. Get these badges up, y'all. Want a men's week? Let's do it. Hello. How you doing? I can't really see you. Can you see me? You know, the, the lights behind you. So, can you see me? Yeah. How old are you? Thirty-five. Okay. Uh, what are the women? What are they getting wrong? Um, uh, I'm thirty-five. I'm a personal trainer. I'm a business owner. Got an eight-year-old son. To make it short and simple, it's just the ability to listen, not hearing to respond, but listening to respond and work with the man as opposed to seeing it like you're trying to tell him, you know, you're trying to tell him what to do or you're trying to, or you're trying to come across like you're not, you know what I'm saying? Like I was listening to the last conversation. You was talking about that gap differential, right? And you were saying, you know, you need to be able to teach a woman something. The biggest issue that I find with the different relationships I've been through, and I'm, I'm in Chicago, I'm from the south side of Chicago, that I've been through is that the women find it hard to work with the man because of sometimes how either they were, they were brought up or if they, if they had two, two uh parents in the household. My parents been married 25 plus years. Okay. okay. Hold on. Hold on. We're, not, we're, starting, we're kind of starting to ramble. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Women's biggest issue is the getting wrong of their ability to listen in order to hear. Make it simple because you said several things. That I, and one, um, if, if you want a woman to listen to you, 
Um, are you talking about women in your past? No, no, I'm even, I'm even talking about. Okay, I need, I need you to stay still. The camera's moving all over the place. All right, I got you. Can you see me? Yeah, because go ahead. Your personal trainer, your personal trainer, your personal trainer, and you have yeah. a father, you're a father of an eight year old boy or a girl. Boy, do you have custody, or does mom have custody? Uh, I just actually won a court battle. Um, that we both got got partial custody. I'm Why didn't you and the mother get married? Baby. Um. At, at at a young age, at, at I was shot at twenty, and I had some other stuff I was going through. And you were twenty seven when you had a kid. Why didn't you marry the mother? Right. So so the reason I didn't marry her because I was I was out doing my I was doing my thing. I'm not even gonna be at. What does that mean? That means having sex with multiple people, just out living, but always took care of my son. But yeah, I mean. Okay. So so I'm gonna ask a hard question. How, how many children does she have? Now she had one with me. That was her first. She has two other kids now. So she has three three total kids. She lives in Michigan. I live in Chicago. All right. So you want her to? You want women like her to no, listen? Hell no. Hell no. Not at all. Or what kind of? Okay. Who are you talking about then? Because I'm trying no, to. I mean, you said you said. Okay. Okay. But what I'm trying to understand is anytime anytime we say what's going wrong with, on with women. It usually ties back into something that, that was going awry in the women we're dealing with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. That's, that's, that's just my son's mom, but I'm going back to your general question. To just simplify okay. it and make it simple, what I found, because I've dated when I was 32, I had a woman who was making 50000 a month, and, and, and she was 39. No bullshit. She was 39. So I've had a different range, and what I've found just – one thing in all my relationships is just like in the art of conversation, accountability, things like that. You're not making it make sense. You're chest pounding. You're not making any sense. You, okay, you asked. You I'm said, 32, she is 39, wrong? she's making $50,000 a month. What are they getting wrong? Women are getting wrong. They're a bit, what are they the, getting wrong? Not right, listening. Imagine, right. The ability to listen because listening is cognitive, right? And hearing well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm hearing. Right. I am a, I am a man. Right. Absolutely. And I'm having a hard time understanding. you. Maybe men need to come become better communicators. Maybe you need to become a better communicator because I am. So I am struggling to stay on the path of you. Okay, so so, so, so get, much so much so that I've had to ask you two or three times to reframe it. So I agree women need to listen in general, but I also can understand if we are not clear in what we are given. See, Sun Tzu will tell you that if the if the army does something wrong, first you blame the general. Did the right. general give clear orders? Were the mm -hmm. orders understood? Could the troop right. follow it out? If so, the fault belongs in the commander. But if on the second turn, if it's done wrong and everything else remains the same, then the fault belongs on the soldier. If you are the commander and your orders aren't being followed, the first person that's at fault is the general. Okay. Are you sure that the women you're trying to get to listen to you, understand you, can carry out what you want to carry out? I mean, yeah, it, it definitely comes down to who you pick. And, and, and I mean, it's through trial and well, error. What I'm so, saying, are you I sure agree. when you're communicating with somebody that they understand you and that they can carry out what you're asking to be carried out? Repeat that one more time for me. Are you sure that the people you're talking to understand what you're saying and have the ability to do what it right. is you want so, done? So in some occasions it's yes, in some occasions it's no. Well, in this occasion where it's no, you can't expect anything different. Right, no, 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 ab absolutely. And then at, at that point in time, it's, it's up to the man, like, or people in general to, to cut that off and learn from that. What I'm just basically answering is, is I, and I hear everything that you're saying, I'm listening, is, is you said, what are women getting wrong? And I'm not going all into deep conversation about everything else. I'm just saying for me, for for my group of men that I know, my my homies, my friends, and what you know, whatever like that, it's just the ability to have a conversation, to listen. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I would say that I, I will. I, I hear you. That, and that's, that's all I'm saying. Okay, I hear you, but I'm also going to challenge to men in general, black men in particular. Far too often, 
black men, we just ramble and talk. One of my abilities is I get straight to the point and I cut through the clutter. You want someone to listen to you, you got to keep, there's, a, there's something called the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep right. it simple. Right. Because if, if, if ultimately there's a communication breakdown, that's two ways. Communication breakdown is always two ways. And more often than not, it's a breakdown in people not, you not communicating, the person doing the communicating not being clear. Less often, it's the person being actively listening. That's the, that's the less part. But I agree with what you're saying. Appreciate it. All right. Guys, understand something. Um, yes, modern women need to be more patient. Granted. But patience needs some security. Patience without uh, security or, or uh, knowing you're going to get the outcome you want is foolish. It's just waiting. Two, read your Sun Tzu. It is the general responsibility to give clear, concise direction. And oftentimes, I will say that I even suffer from that thinking I was saying one thing and it wasn't. So you often hear me say, what does that mean to you? I'll repeat what I'm saying. I'll make sure the person heard what I said. I'll even say, repeat it. Why? Because that's communication. See, I think that I think there's a possibility that many men lack, uh, need to improve your C, your communication skills. And having a lack of communication skills frustrates men because we're, women are not doing what we're asking. Well, are you communicating clearly? That's the first question you always got to ask. Am I communicating clearly and concisely? If not, if that's then, can they do it? If those two things are aligned, then you can have some expectation. That'll help you in your personal and professional life. How you doing, Kevin? I'm well. How old are you? 35. All right. And what are women getting wrong today? Um, I, I think it's the feminine aspect um, in general. Uh, I, I was married for six years. Um, yeah. I have two kids out of that marriage. And from what I see most of the time, you know, in relationships past that and with that, it's just that feminine side of things. They, they want to kind of take over um, at a certain point when a man tries to allow them to have a voice, allow them to, you know, try to make some decisions together and do some things. Um, and just the nagging overall. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's make it, let's make it clear. Are you saying that women have a problem with the feminine aspect? Or are you saying, it sounds like you're saying women are being masculine. Yes. Women are being too masculine. Absolutely. All right. And then you said something about when you allow them to say again, that you allow them to what? To have more of a say so in the more, more more of a say so in what regard? Um, I would say just in the aspect of of you know the they want certain things um to transpire like uh, maybe you helping out with certain aspects of the child care or you helping out with certain aspects of you know just around the house things. Well, I don't understand where. A woman can be in her masculine by asking you to help with the kids. So I'm not being clear. What are you allowing her more latitude with that's in the masculine realm? Um, I, I would just say um, just feeling like, like they're the one in control of certain things. Such as? Such as with, with the kids, you know, with the kids – or just such in, as such as let's say um how the child should be um bathed or how the dishes should be washed or where they should be put it's it's the the tone um but what i'm not i'm not understanding brother that's the that's the purview of women 
Like, why why do we have any input in that at all? That that's my thing. If, if the man is already handling the situation, but they okay. Want but why are you why are you handling it? Why? Because um, in my situation, I was able to be home more often. But but that but that's not your. But see, listen to what I'm about to say. You said the women are problem with the femininity and they're being too masculine, but you're in her territory. What you just described was a man who was not in his masculine. You were in the feminine space. And you can't be tripping that a woman treated you like a woman in her space. So just, just because you were home. Not really home, but I mean it doesn't matter. That's her space. Women let's say you were rich, right? You could still be home. You know, just like I know, women have a different way of nesting. They like the house to look a certain way. We're supposed to be responsible for the outside and they're responsible for the inside. They like the pillows fluffed a certain way, this, that. And just because you can fluff a pillow, that's their job. You ain't got her, you ain't asking her to cut the yard or edge it, are you? I mean, she could do it, but you know how to do it different. You're in her space. And I would I would say also the the aspect of being able to um, take in information. Uh, I heard what you said to the last person. You know, as the general, are you giving out? You know, what I'm saying the the right orders and 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 measuring those things. And I saw it as I aligned everything. You know, biblically. You know, as I was giving out. You know, those those types of things and you know she was submissive in the beginning we last hey, given her information what kind of information are you talking about though information such as um maybe uh different ways to handle finances different who's, ways whose job is that to handle the finance i mean we, we both handle them okay see if you listen to me this is a good conversation because you mentioned biblically but I've mentioned this before. Oftentimes we overload our women doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Pressure is made for shoulders, not for hips. Did you have did you have an abundance of finances? Not at that time. Now All right. So that's a pressure situation. You're involving a mother in stressful financial decisions. Could you have handled them yourself? Um. Yeah, I think I I could have handled them all all myself. It then you sh then you should have. When we don't need, and I've done this myself too. That's why I said pressure's made for shoulders, not for hips. See what you've described is a situation where you're in places you shouldn't necessarily be in the best fit, and then places where you should be a hundred percent. You're delegating. You should stay over here, and you let her be over there. If you can't handle the finances. Uh, and she's better at it, then that's one thing. But if she's not better at it and more qualified, then your job is to go find somebody who's more qualified because that's the security of the house and let her fluff the pillows. But to you describe a situation where the house has overlapping roles, and that doesn't really work that well. I've been there. It doesn't work that well. It don't work. I don't, I don't live, but I don't live that way now. Right. See, the problem that I agree, a lot of our women are in their masculine because too many of us are abdicating our masculine and giving to their area. So um, if you've ever, I don't know if you ever said any uh, Hispanic or Mexican friends, I was surprised to see. I'm half Puerto Rican. I, I was surprised to see how little the men that they really did around the house, even though they could do, black men would have been up doing this and doing that. When I went by my uh, Mexican friend's house, the guys were in the guys' room and the women were doing it, and, and there was peace, happiness, joy, and little Coronas and shit. Yeah, man. So just think about it this way. Um, even though you, I have a client, I'll say that I have a client who's a multimillionaire, and they were having marital issues. And I told them they hadn't had sex for months. I was like, what I need you to do is I need you to get up in the morning and leave the house before the crack of dawn, and I need you to come back after, after it's dark. And don't tell your wife, don't tell your wife you've been out checking on the businesses. I need you to do that for a week. 
And he called back off the Wednesday and said, oh, my God. After a few days, she jumped on me. And we've been going at it like teenagers. And I was like, what I need you to do is I need you to go rent an office space, an executive space, and go put a PlayStation in there. But I need you to get up and go. Like you're leaving to go to work every day. He's like, why don't you do that? I'm a multimillionaire. Because your woman needs to see you go to work. Women do not need us in their space all the time. They, wanna, they want us away. Even though we can be there, we need to give women time to decompress, time to miss us, time to fart, pick their nose. They, they, they human. Right. Time to talk shit with their friends on the phone and then come home and let her do what she has to do. You do the, what you got to do and kind of stay in our roles. I think you probably have better outcomes in your next situation if you just kind of keep that top of mind. Yeah, and I, I've seen it, like you said, with um, women of other cultures. Mm -hmm. um, just like you said, this the the submissiveness as well as, you know, them want to cook dinner without you saying nothing. They got everything ready. They just mm -hmm. move, you know, in a different mindset of, you know, what the roles are. The roles are clearly defined. And mm -hmm. I think um, in my personal situation, you know, those roles could not be clearly defined because of our backgrounds. You and know? so, so knowing that going forward as the man, what I would suggest doing is define them for yourself and understand that, you know, is this the purview of the woman or more of the feminine or more of the masculine? Is it, does it revolve in protection and provision or does it revolve for maintenance? Maintenance is hers. You protect and provision. Let her put the babies to bed while you worry about how to get the checkbook balance. Think it'll work better in the future. And we and here's the thing. Just because we didn't learn it growing up or didn't see it growing up, doesn't mean we can't correct it and do better next time. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. All right, Chief. Later. Appreciate you, man. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, man, that whole pressure is made for shoulders, not hips. Been there, done that. Um, gentlemen. If if women are getting into the masculine, ask yourself a question. What what is there something in the masculine purview that's in in her in her space? You know? Um and I would say to a black man in particular, because we so many of us was raised with mama. And we were raised learning how to cook and clean and do stuff. A lot of brothers feel lazy sitting on the couch watching the women do all the stuff while they're there. And sometimes we're going to be like, you can help me. Um, <laughs> I'll say something about the first part. Right, just stay out of the house. Because when you're sitting on the couch, she probably will help me with these kids. Just stay out of the house. And you come back home, Woo, I'm tired. These kids got me run out. She'll be happy. Some people call it chauvinist, misogynist. It just makes good sense. And you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let me see. I'm trying to take one more. Mm. Let's turn the commenting back on. Oh, it's almost 11.30. We got to wrap this thing up. Uh, tomorrow on YouTube, tomorrow on YouTube, we're going to have uh, the PMS tomorrow. We're going to be talking about sex. What do women get wrong about sex? I think women get a lot wrong about sex because they don't understand us today. Guys, you have a chance to call in. Uh, I'm going to ask anybody to call in. Make sure you're on the topic. And uh, I may actually, I don't know if I have time, if I may have the time to do a Saturday show. Uh, I may call it like a fish fry. Uh, I keep you keep you posted on that one. But here's the thing, ladies, do yourself a favor. In this men's week, check out what the men are saying in the comment section. Don't trip about the words and the tone. Try to hear what the men are saying. Some of the things that men are feeling like women are getting wrong. Um, um, You'd be surprised. There may be some stuff you can actually learn. Guys are trying to actually communicate. And like I said, regardless as to what popular media says, the majority of men want to be with women. They want to be married, meaning. They want married, marriage and kids. So what they don't want to do is they don't want to fail. 
and they don't want chaos. Nobody likes to do something that they don't think they'd be any good at. Um, see all these requests. I, I got a crap ton of requests right now. Let's see. And I don't know why this is not popping up. Okay. And they got to get better with this on Instagram. They got to get better with this on Instagram. All right, gentlemen. Um, I think that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, this is good. Uh, I'm going to upload this to uh, YouTube. Um, so thank you. Please don't upload my content. Um, I'm going to upload it myself. So till next time, gentlemen. Your Godfather is out. Peace. We're gone.